Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we got an exciting one today because we're introducing the Farm Command Center. So uh, you may have seen something new in Farm Command if you've logged in this morning. And today we're going to talk about that a little bit here. So before I go too far, I always like to make sure that everybody can hear me. So if you wouldn't mind uh, maybe just raising your hand uh, using that side panel, make sure that everyone can hear me. Awesome. And, and as always, if you do have any questions, feel free to type those into the question box and we will answer those here in a little bit. Uh, so my name is Chris Kennard. I'm Product Marketing Manager here at Farmer's Edge. Um, and so I'm happy to be here today talking to you about what's new within Farm Command. Uh, so this is something that, that we've kind of been waiting for and we're excited to be able to show somewhat of a sneak peek to our customers. So really what we're doing here is bringing new technology um, to build features that improve usability and, and functionality and performance within Farm Command for all of our users. Um, while the feature set within the system of, of what I'm going to show you is, is somewhat incomplete, we're showing you that sneak peek, like I mentioned, of, of the new tools and, and new features that, that we're going to be transitioning to here over the next few months. We're going to iterate and 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 develop and add new features as we go, um, and provide value to to all of our users um, with each new development that we make. So really, why is this great? Um, we're, we're doing things that we've never really done before, uh, that we couldn't do before based on the technologies that we've had, and, and this is pretty much 12 months in the making, and and we expect to have this fully transition to the new user experience. Uh, before next season. So the focus here, and, and definitely I'm gonna hop into the program and, and show you how to use it and, and what's available as of today. But what we're focusing on is reporting. We wanna bring be able to bring data out of Farm Command. So we're looking at reporting, um, exporting of, <clears throat> excuse me, Excel sheets or PDFs of any of the information that you wanna see. Uh, we're gonna have subscriptions to reporting that you'd be able to opt into and, and get detailed reports based off of the information that you would like to receive out of Farm Command. And then also we have an enhanced lead experience for viewing path and attribute filtering, and then an enhanced imagery experience where a one click will load imagery for all fields or filtering by crop or uh, filtering by variety. So, um, you know, this is exciting. There, there's there's lots happening here and, and, and lots of new features that are going to be added over a little while. Um, and, and it's somewhat after lots of talk going on that, that has organized this. And, and so, you know, I'm a farmer as well. Um, I use Farm Command every single day and, and I'm excited for this as, as an average size farmer. Um, you know, for, for large farms, this is going to be a huge improvement for viewing tons of information. Um, easily you know on on one screen with a few clicks and and then for our far, small farmers as well giving that complete overview of what's going on um understand though that this is a sneak peek and it's not going to be perfect um with a sneak peek it, it's obviously new technology so we want to be able to um focus on what's there and and as we go through this process provide feedback to um, some of the people at Farmers Edge you work with, you know, part of having the sneak peek and, and ongoing development allows us to adjust based off of our customer feedback and make sure that we're still providing um, the best solution possible and, and the best platform possible. So with that said, I've got one more slide here and then I'll hop into a, a live demo. So where to access this, um, this center, uh, you'll You'll probably see a new button populate on the left-hand side menu of Farm Command. Um, when you're when you first log in, you go to the dashboard and you'll see this button. If you click there, it's going to take you to the Farm Command Center. Um, if you don't see it, um, it, it's actually new as of this morning. So we're we're really on the on the front edge of this. Um, if you don't see it, um, one suggestion would just be to close your browser and reset it. Um, sometimes when we do release a new update and maybe you had a browser over op, uh, open overnight, you may just need to close the browser, reopen Farm Command, and it should populate. 
Uh, so that button will be there and allow you to access things. So with that said, I'm just going to load up farm command here and I'll, and I'll run through a few things. So as I said, uh, I've logged into farm command, I'm on the dashboard and right away I see this new, new button. Um, so as I click on that farm command center button, I'm taken to the that sneak peek, that new look and feel of what farm command is going to be. So right away you can see some changes here. Along the top we have our dashboard map, list and reports. First off, the, the only one that's going to be available right now is the map. Um, so if you try and click on list or reports or dashboard, it, it won't work. Um, the map is, is where we have available as of today. And you can see right away all my field borders are loaded up in the farm command. Um, but you can see the main difference is this filter, uh, this filter set on the left hand side. So with this filter set, we, we've changed how uh, our customers can access their information and load information within the field borders. Under our assets, we have our list of grower farm field. Uh, my grower is already selected, but you can see at the top I have this date range button. This date range allows me to select a date range of information I want to view within Farm Command. Um, you may have may remember that we, we operate in seasons. So in the top right corner of the Farm Command map manager, for example, you have to select a season and, and you'd only be able to operate within that season. Well, now I can select a date range. Um, we do have those pre-populated seasons here. But I'd be able to go back and select January 1st of 2019 and select all the way up until the end of 2020 um, and be able to look at the time frame for, for those entire two years. Um, so that's going to add to improvement uh, to performance as well, making it easier to view information year over year without having to operate between seasons. So I'm just going to leave it as uh, 2020 for now. And then you can see I have my grower farm field filter set. Um, it does have my grower selected, but I'd be able to um, filter to specific fields within the map as well. If I wanted to just select one field, I'm going to be able to view information for only that field. If I want to select all fields, I can hit select all, uh, but because I have my grower selected, it's actually pulling all of those up already. So again, making it easy to filter and display what a user would like to see on the map. Um, you know, to pull up those field borders, they were already pulled up, but from two button clicks, I can quickly just load one specific field or remove fields from the map. Next down the list is our crops. So another way to filter to a specific crop type or variety, where I'd be able to choose a particular crop, filter to those, and only have those borders showing up on the map. Same works for the current variety as well. Um, if I choose canola, it's only going to show me my canola varieties. If I show choose wheat or corn, it's only going to show the, the wheat or corn varieties that are being grown on this farm. And so those only those field borders would show up. The next one down the list here is field layers. So you can see we have our satellite imagery, applied data, harvest, profit, and zones. But you'll notice that satellite imagery is the only one that's available right now. Um, and that's kind of the sneak peek. We're, we're getting into crop monitoring season here soon, uh, once planting you know, finishes up. And, and we wanted to be able to get in satellite imagery as a starting place to, to allow users to take advantage of this new experience, this new performance, um, and, and do so through the crop monitoring season with satellite imagery. So we do have our three main satellite images available uh, within Command Center. You notice that we won't have the crop health change maps available quite yet, uh, but of course everything will be added, so we will see that populate here in the near future. But I can click on one of these maps, and right away you can see there's a timeline loaded at the bottom. Within this timeline, there's, there's dates, and you can see that there's colors showing. For example, on this is May 17th, you can see that the circle is yellow. That means that every field that I have loaded, so all of our fields on this farm have imagery available. You can see um, May 18th is black. So that means that this date doesn't have imagery available on this farm. And you'll see uh, May 22nd, 
is gray, that means that only some of the fields within the visual here have imagery available. If I click on May 19th, it's going to pull up imagery for this farm within the imagery layer that I have selected. If I select scouting or variation, you can see that the tabs are added at the bottom. And I'm now able to just quickly switch between these layers and then imagery is going to pull up. So if you remember back to the map manager within Farm Command, I would have to click on each one of these fields. I would have to load layers, and then I'd have to choose the imagery layer that I want to select. Now within the Farm Command Center, all I have to do is select a specific date, and instantly these imagery layers are pulling up. And as I zoom out, you can see that's extended for the entire farm. So right away, um, you know, something that may have taken an hour or more to pull up um, imagery layers for a large farm, we can now do within seconds with just a few button clicks. So all of these three imagery layers are available. If I have all three of them selected on the left-hand side, all I have to do is click on this bottom bar here and be able to filter to, through which imagery layers I want to have pulled up on the map. Now, if I zoom back in, um, and maybe I'm interested in looking at a particular field, I can click on this field and it's going to tell me some general information. If I look at scouting, which is an NDVI map, um, it's going to show me NDVI values. NDVI, which is obviously an NDVI map as well, is going to show me NDVI values. And also, when I click on that field, you can see that there's a, a yellow button here in the top right corner. If I click on that yellow button, it's just going to pull me up some, some additional information that will allow me to um, understand what, what is available there. Um, so we look at NDBI chart. Uh, we will display information, um, you know, looking at the mean, uh, average, and, and the highs and lows of NDBI, and then understand how many acres are being displayed within that particular NDBI level. So you'll also notice within the field layers, um, that there is a button, another tab at the bottom that says crops. So underneath field layers, and I can just hide this panel by uh, hitting this down arrow on the right hand side, you can see we have this crops tab. So this crops tab allows me to adjust borders based off of um, particular crop types. So I can change the colors of the borders to show a, a certain crop type. So right now they're all empty, but I'd be able to choose wheat and select a color. Uh, then I can choose canola and select a different color. So we're providing here just a, a quick way to uh, select a, a certain crop type, have those imagery, uh, have those borders load to that particular crop type and have a quick glance at what's going on. Um, now this can help <clears throat> you know, at a, at a quick glance, understand what's available. Now, the reason I've done that is because this NDVI map that I'm going to pull up, um, you know, it, it's it's not a, an imagery layer that is used to identify some of those problem areas in the field before they become too large. The NDVI map has been used as a, an imagery layer to compare fields of the same crop type to each other to understand the healthiness of the crop and the and the progression of, of growth within that particular field. But it's not used to compare fields that are different crops. It's meant to compare fields that are the same crop. So now that I've loaded those colors between the field borders, I can now compare this canola field to this canola field, and then these wheat fields to each other. Now we're fairly early on in, in, in the season here now. Um, some of these fields have only been uh, seeded for two weeks or or um, maybe even less so there's not much vegetative growth here yet uh, but if i were to go back and, and i'll just show you how to do that if i if i wanted to go back and look at some 2019 information i'd be able to to go back to let's say um july here uh, pull up an image from july 6th or images, I guess, because I'm loading them for all fields. Um, and now I can start comparing fields that are the same crop type to each other. Uh, so we have some wheat fields uh, right here. 
uh, and then in, in the right hand side here. So now I'm able to compare these two fields and see crop uh, progression. Uh, the field on the right hand side of the barn is a canola field. The field um, on the far left is also a canola field, and we can see the progression of growth between these. And the field here in the middle is a soybean field. So again, something completely different that we're looking at. But we're adding another use case for this NDVI map that previously we wouldn't have been able to use because the uh, ability to load imagery was, was a bit more difficult and it wasn't as, as quick to do so. But now we're able to do so very quickly. And then again, I can filter through the imagery layers to look at the scouting map, which helps me identify some of those problem areas within the field. And then the variation map, um, which looks for those subtle differences and um, you know things that we might not be able to catch with our naked eye. So definitely seeing some, some different variability within these fields. Um, just for some context, these were actually canola fields that were reseeded last year due to um, flea beetle damage. So that's why we're seeing some some significant straight lines and, and different colors within uh, these two fields specifically. So that's the viewing of imagery. Um, we do also have an enhanced equipment experience within this as well. I'm just gonna remove these satellite images for now, uh, but do remember that we can have those available um, as a background when viewing equipment information. I'm just going to go back and select my 2020 season just to make sure everything's up to date. But you'll see below this field layers that we have a fleet and equipment button. If I hit that fleet and equipment button, again, I, I have a date range selector here, which automatically selects for the 24 hours of the day that we're currently on. I can, um, if I just zoom out a bit here, uh, we see if we have a few values that we're able to um, filter to view equipment on the map. Status, for example, I can hit inactive and see all of the inactive machines, or I can hit active and see the active machines. So right now you can see we have one here. If I hover over that, it's gonna provide us some general information. Uh, so we've got fuel level at 37%, engine RPM and speed, so it doesn't look like the tractor is actively moving, uh, but we'd be able to see that moving if, if it was showing up. Uh, we're able to filter if I just remove that inactive, we can filter by uh, type of machine. So if I wanted to only see sprayers on the farm, or if I wanted to see harvesters, uh, we're able to filter to a specific type. But as always, I can hit select all and have that information populate. I can filter by years of machines, make, model, and name of machines. Um, so again, if I want to view all machines on the farm, I want to filter by name. I can hit select all and they all populate on the map. I can hover over any of these machines and it's going to show us some general information. But you can see at the bottom of this list here, it shows a selected tab. So this is showing what all information I have selected to view on the map. Um, and from here, I can actually remove information without having to deal with this list at the top. So I know it's been selected. I know what's showing up on the map. I can I can just quickly select and, and remove what's uh, available on the map. So if I want to view equipment path for this machine, all I have to do is hit uh, select that machine and it's going to load path for the time range that I have selected. Um, so as I said before, we have the last or the, the 24 hours of May 28th selected. So really showing all the activity that's occurred today. Uh, if I wanted to look at the last hour or the last six hours, I could quickly hit those buttons um, and it's gonna just change my time frame from six hours back from uh, what, where we sit right now. And the same for one hour. Uh, so you can see the, the path that we're looking at right now is, is, is a speed path. Uh, so that's the, the one we're available to, to view as we sit today, but we will uh, increase the amount of um, attributes that we're able to filter by to view path for. The same as what you'll see in, in Equipment Manager within Farm Command right now. But let's say I wanna look back at the path uh, beyond just what uh, I have selected for today. I know that this tractor started seeding on May 2nd, so I could go from uh, May 2nd until 
I, I'll select tomorrow so I get all of today included. And as I zoom out, you can start seeing the path of that machine quickly loading within all the fields that it's covered over almost you know those those 27 days. Because we're viewing speed, you can see the distance traveled on the road. Uh, the color has increased to the you know above 20 or above 15. And I believe these units I'm in right now are kilometer, uh, actually. No, they're in miles per hour. So looking at miles per hour, um, and then obviously underneath that, uh, below five miles an hour or, or just just above is, is the speed traveled within all the fields. So kind of giving a quick glance at all of um, everything that this machine has covered during the time frame I've selected. But if I wanted to look at other machines, you know, maybe I want to look at um, you know, this past week, and I wanted to look at the tractor I have selected, but then also a sprayer, uh, I'd be able to select both of those machines, and, and it's going to load path for both of those machines. So that's what we have available today. Of course, we do have our field layers where we're able to load imagery. Um, if I select an imagery layer, you can. I just want to remind of this field layers tab that's opened up at the bottom, which allows me to select dates and, and have the imagery populate for the dates that I've selected. But of course, if I want to hop between field layers, I can hit scouting to see the scouting maps. So you can see the equipment information is still being displayed. I can see the variation map as well. And at the bottom here, we have our crops list where I'm able to adjust um, and, and change those field border colors based off of crop type. So it's important to note that everything that you're used to within Farm Command is still available. To get back to Farm Command, if I want to view applied data or if I want to view um, weather information or if I want to view uh, grow stage models. All I have to do is hit this back to farm command button and I'm able to do so very quickly. Um, so then I can operate through the, the old farm command. As I go back in, into uh, the farm command center, there's one more tool that I would like to show you. Um, it's this weather at the bottom here. So if I hover over, this is actually uh, a severe, severe weather alert. Um, it's coming from IBM's weather feed where, and I do have an example open here right now, where we are identifying uh, based off of the IBM severe weather, uh, where hail events currently, where hail events have potentially occurred. So if I zoom out here um, and you can see we've got a new legend here at the bottom for loading <clears throat> specific dates. And for the region that I zoom out to, it's going to search and see based off of IBM's severe weather feed where there was potential of, of hail in these areas. So as I zoom in, you can see this, this blue area populating and you can actually see all of these dates populating as well. Uh, but as I click on this area, you can see uh, the size of the hail potential in this area. So it was greater than an inch and a half the date that that hail swap came through. So this is giving an idea of when these severe hail events did occur. Now we haven't had hail in our area, so I can't pull up the field borders, but you'd be able to underlay the field borders with this and see there where there was potential for hail on your fields. Of course, we do have um, the crop health change maps and notifications where we identify the severity and size of um, effects to field and, and crop growth. So these would combat with that, where we can understand where the potential hail event occurred. We have the imagery layers to help ground truth and understand where those effects might have occurred on our fields. And we can use this information to have conversations with our, our insurance and hail adjusters. Um, so we're really getting into that alerting of, of, of when you know, things kind of out of our control have affected our fields and get quicker return on, on some of those insurance um, insurance, some of those insurance conversations. So that's something that that um, obviously you can see that is available here, but I just wanted to hop into a different account to, to give you an example of that showing up.
so this is, you know, pretty exciting stuff. Um, as I said, I'm a farmer. I'm, you're looking at some of my fields right now. Um, this is something that I've been waiting for and, and excited to start using. Um, you know, it just makes imagery so much easier to load. Um, it makes equipment information so much easier, easier to load where we sit today. And having that severe weather information is, is going to be a nice addition that we didn't have before. Um, so that's going to be something that that I look forward to using here. And, and well, maybe not look forward to using um, if we don't get any hail, but having access to it anyways. So um, again, we're going to see more features get added, um, but all of those features are still available in what I'll call the old form command. But please um, get in there and, and use it, get familiar with it, because this is where uh, we're transitioning to here over the next little while, and we want to make sure you're comfortable. If you do have questions um, beyond that, please, I believe I have an email here to share. Uh, please email support at farmersedge.ca. Um, you can reach out to myself um, if you'd like, because I can uh, help you know, train and, and discuss some things. But then also, uh, you know, we have our, our techs, our CSM teams who are available to, to help and answer questions as well. So um, please reach out with any feedback, any questions. Um, as I've said, we are running through this as a, as a development of, and we wanted to show you a sneak peek to, to get your hands on it uh, and provide any feedback that, that you may have. So with that, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in, um, but please, like I mentioned, email that uh, support at Farmer's Edge or, or reach out to your local Farmer's Edge rep and, and we, can, um, we can work through any of those. So with that, I think this is a good time to, shut it down for today. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, get in there and play around and we will talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.